Welcome back to Two Keto Dudes. This is Carl Franklin from Connecticut in the United States. And in February 2016, I put myself on a ketogenic diet to take control of my metabolism. In just two and a half months, I managed to reverse all my markers of type 2 diabetes with diet alone. As of now, I'm 80 pounds lighter with no signs of diabetes or heart disease. Hi, I'm Richard Morris in Canberra, Australia. I've been on a ketogenic diet since April of 2014. When I started, I was very sick with complications from type 2 diabetes. Within six months of starting a ketogenic diet, all of my biomarkers of disease had disappeared. I've lost about 100 pounds. I've completely turned my health around. And this show is a document of my progress through ketosis and Richard's experience thriving for years in ketosis. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Hopefully that might help a few people who are curious about this kind of dietary hacking. Yeah, we're not doctors, we don't want to give anyone any medical advice, but we are keen to share our own experiences. We're actually both software developers, so we're not afraid of a little technical detail, are we, Carl? No way, no how. (laughs) (laughs) We've done some research into our own deranged metabolisms and the science behind them, and we hope to share some of that research. Where possible, we intend to put links in the show notes to cite research supporting any claims that we make. Yep, and you'll probably work out pretty quickly that we're both foodies. Oh, yeah. We love to cook, and we love to eat. Mm Mm-hmm. In every episode, we both share a keto recipe that cannot be ignored. No, it cannot. (laughs) So let's start podcast number 100. Booyah! Booyah! (laughs) Keto Centurions. Heard you say y'all do for a little... So, Richard, do we have any apologies or corrections from last week's show? Uh, Last week's show was Inspiring Your Community with Dr. Brian Lenskus. Uh, No, there's no corrections or apologies for that one. Yeah, and he inspired a lot of people, got a lot of great comments. He absolutely did. Yeah. It's one of the most commented on of our shows. Yep. Uh, So, let's revisit what a ketogenic diet is. Sure. A ketogenic diet is one where we get all of our energy from fat. And the way that we do that is we eat no sugar or starch, no carbohydrates. Uh, you can probably get under 20 grams of carbohydrates and still be in a ketogenic diet without any problems. Uh, and all of those are going to be in, they're going to be incidental, like right. uh, an egg's got a ca- carbohydrate in it, one gram of carbohydrate, and maybe leafy greens got a little bit more, some Little-chies. nuts have got a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, you're going to get all of your energy from fat. You still have to have some protein because that's what you build your body out of. And we limit that to between 1 and 1.5 grams per kilogram of lean body mass. Yeah. So in my case, my lean body mass is 80 and a half kilograms. And so I eat between 80 and 120 grams of protein a day. Yes. Under 20 grams of carbohydrates and all of my energy from fat. And fat is to satiety. And this is the trick. Once you get rid of all of the carbohydrates, your satiety mechanism works. It tells you when you need energy Mm. and then you eat fat. And if you're able to get fat from your body, then you're going to need less energy and Mm -hmm. your satiety signal is going to kick in a lot earlier. If you're not able to get energy from your body fat, then your satiety signal will kick in a lot later. So it automatically manages uh, the process so that you lose weight and get down to a point where you have a safe and stable body weight that your body is comfortable being at. So that's a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Well, uh, Richard, how was your week? It was pretty good. Uh, we've been eating a lot of porchetta, <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> which has been delicious. For the most part, we're just getting ready for the 100th episode, which is this one. Yep. And we put a message out to the forum and asked people who had uh, lost at least 100 pounds in body weight. And so I've just been working on the data yeah. um, and uh, collating that and working working out some statistics to share uh, with the audience in this episode. So that's my week. You also hit a weight loss goal this week, didn't you? Oh, I wasn't going to s- mention that. No, yes, I no, did. no. Uh, yeah, no, I, I actually hit 100 kilograms. So wow. I, I, yeah, I, I was actually 100.9 kilograms. And i got to mention, this was after I'd been out for a ride, and it's the middle of summer here, so mm. it's hot, and I was a bit dehydrated, so, yeah. you know, I don't like. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. Like I don't, I don't like using that really as a body weight, but uh, I I was under one hundred two easily 
um, Interesting. Uh, without the dehydration. So, yeah, lightest I've been since I've been 21. So Awesome. That's great. Mm-hmm. So, how was your week? Well, my week was pretty good, uh, mostly centered around getting ready for a gig, practicing, and doing some software development uh, work, and uh, mm-hmm. starting another music to flow by, and uh, <laughs> doing some experimentation with tapas for uh, nice. you know, for our upcoming for shows. Recipes. And yeah. I got to tell you, man, I made some... <laughs> I mean, it's a, sorry, fasters, plug your ears. Uh, <laughs> bacon wrapped deep fried lamb chops. Oh, MG. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're not going to hear about those until we get through the top of stuff. Uh, yeah. And we might do a, you know, a, a sort of a American cuisine or a catch all cuisine. I don't know. Sure. But you'll, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that soon. You'll probably see about them on the Kidogenic Forum. I'm sure they'll uh, yes, be in uh, yes. food we ate the other day. So, yep. yeah. Yep, they'll be there. Mm-hmm. Well, Richard, let's give away some stuff. What do you think? Yeah, some loot. <laughs> some loot. How about a mug with our mugs on it? I like that. A Keep Calm and Keto on coffee mug, yes. uh, which we give away to one lucky member of the Two Keto Dudes fan club every show. Right. And yeah. uh, if you don't know what that is, just go to fanclub.twoketo.com and answer a few questions, and then you might be picked to win a mug. Yeah, and if you can't wait to win a mug, you can always go to our uh, store, gear.2keto.com, and buy one. Yeah, and pick yourself up a t-shirt or something while you're there. (laughs) Today's winner is John Barclay. Congratulations, John. Congratulations, John. We'll be sending that out to you. He's from Utah, I think. Utah. So we'll uh, be sending that very shortly. And yeah, go ahead and sign up for the fan club. We uh, we appreciate your input, and we reward you by uh, randomly giving away stuff. So, this brings us to the part of our show uh, that our viewers love. Yes. This is the part that we call... Mail! Mail! (laughs) Mail. Mail. Okay, I'm going to go first. And I've got one here from Keto Nisses NZ. uh, And this is on a forum, and this is Keto Priorities. And her name's Michelle. She says, first of all, I want to thank the two keto dudes for starting and maintaining this forum. It's hugely valuable, a resource, and a safe gathering place for those of us who are embarking on a keto uh, way of eating, way of living, and for those who are further on the journey. And thanks to those of you with the admin hats on who keep the wheels well-oiled and the train on its track. She says, I've been reading a lot of threads on the forum over the last couple of weeks, and here are my reflections. So she says, if you come to keto with weight loss in mind and you don't suffer any metabolic derangement, you are some of the fortunate and you will benefit enormously. You'll most likely lose weight. You'll keep it off as long as you maintain this way of eating and as long as you don't return to the standard American diet. You'll also reap the long-term benefits when you stay keto. Yes. And I've got to say, this is Julie's experience. She wasn't uh, hugely deranged, but she got a lot of benefit out of it and she got her body weight down to her ideal body weight, which is wonderful. Uh, So Michelle goes on, she says, if we come to keto and we have a degree of metabolic derangement, for example, insulin resistance, diabetes, prediabetes, to name the first but not the least, uh, we may need to ask ourselves about our priorities. Many, myself included, uh, come to keto to lose weight as a first priority. Um, this is an excellent priority as there will be many benefits to losing weight. However, the scales can become a bit of an obsession. Yeah. Uh, those of us who come to keto from this path may need to move to a different priority, and that is one of metabolic healing. Mm. Uh, so reducing or reversing and preventing the worsening of our metabolic derangement would be a beneficial primary focus. I, and I've got to admit, uh, for me, Richard, this was the whole reason that I did it. I yep. really wasn't that worried about body weight. Um, for me, it was really about saving toes because, you know, that I was in trouble. Mm. So anyway, Michelle goes on and says that without metabolic healing, we can't progress as far along the road of weight loss as we would like. We'll be constantly frustrated by one plateau after another. Uh, why, oh, why am I not, not losing weight, wringing my hands? Mm. I'm doing everything right. I'm a perfect 20 grams of carbs a day, et cetera, et cetera. So um, all of this has gone through my head, says Michelle, uh, and I'm sure it's gone through the heads of many other uh, people. Uh, Being impatient is a part of modern life. Uh, We want everything right now. However, like saving a deposit for a home, it takes time, sometimes a long time. 
so she says, you know, I'm now in a place where I have to look at these priorities and ask myself uh, how I support myself in shifting these priorities, put away the scales maybe and, uh, and other ways of measuring and weight measurement, fitness, blood pressure. Mm. Um, uh, she said, I was struck by something that Richard said about healing adipose tissue and how it takes 10 years to completely heal adipose tissue. She's actually referring to a, a comment that I made about from a, a study which used a radio tagging uh, to determine that body fat survives for about 10 years. So every Every year, one-tenth of your body fat is uh, dying and being replaced by new uh, uh, adipose mm. cells. And that means after 10 years, you won't have any cells that remember you having been, been a diabetic. Yeah. Um, so, um, so anyway, that, that's an interesting comment. And it had an interesting thread about it. One thing that I want to mention is that body weight is important but it's not the most important thing. Um, and I can think of three metabolic markers of health that will precede weight loss. Potentially, they will happen years before you get down to a normal body weight. Um, if you become pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic, then the, your HbA1c is the first thing. You want to get that under 5.6. And uh, if you do that, then your pancreatic function will be likely trending healthier uh, and if your HbA1c is above that, then your pancreatic function is likely trending unhealthier. So, right. um, so you want to you make the trend your friend, uh, get your HbA1c down. And for most of us, that happens, you know, in the first five months or so, uh, your, your our HbA1c is uh, coming to line. Her comment about plateaus really rings true with me. I've been on a big plateau here for a long time, and I yeah. and I'm really just not sick. I'm in. I'm not diabetic. I have no. Mm. Uh, heart disease issues. I don't have any of those complications and uh, edemas and uh, aches and pains, and I'm still full of energy. And I'm I, I I'm in it because I feel great. And I right. know that if I went back to eating crap, that I would just gain weight and feel be miserable <laughs> again, and probably diabetic again. So right. I I stayed for the way it feels and. Um, and, you know, yeah. I know that if I keep calm and keto on, and that it really is a magic phrase, that sooner yeah. or later, you know, the, I'll, I'll reach that next level. Well, worst case, 10 years. I mean, right. I guess the, I guess after the HbA1c, the next most popular marker is uh, is your insulin resistance. And there's yeah. a, a formula. If you get your fasted insulin and fasted glucose, uh, there's a formula called HOMA IR um, that will tell you how much insulin you need to, to make uh, to keep your glucose in control. So the mm. first the first marker is HbA1c. That tells you your glucose is in control. Mm -hmm. The second marker is how much insulin you needed to make that, uh, to keep that glucose in control. Yeah. And then the third one is uh, triglycerides over HDL. Uh, and that really looks at how deranged your lipids need to become to deal with your consistently high insulin. So mm. that really that really looks at, are you able to uh, to scale your your insulin up and down uh, as, as appropriate? So, uh, if your insulin is always up, then that's going to be further deranging uh, your arterial wall, so right. and that then causes heart attack. But I guess the thing is, once you've disassociated obesity from the diseases that usually travel with it, like right. type two diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease, then being overweight really becomes a cosmetic state and not a disease state, and that's that's really my bottom line. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, very true. And uh, wow, thanks for that. That's a great mail and a great yeah. thread and thanks, a nice little side discussion to start the show. I love it. No worries. So what have you got, Carl? Well, I have something not nearly as deep or important. It's uh, from the humor section of the forum. And I just wanted to point out that, yes, <laughs> we do have a humor section where yeah. people, uh, you know, it turns out the forum users are pretty funny people. Yeah. So this is a thread called Witty Keto Sayings. <laughs> and so, you know, just post your Witty Keto Sayings. And mm -hmm. it, what reminded me to go here was um, somebody posted a, a, a fake headline. It was like an Onion-style headline, which said, right. uh, New study shows that most people believe anything that starts with new study shows. <laughs> it's kind of true <laughs> I thought that was meta but anyway yeah. uh, here are some of the ones in the forum carbs are for kids carbs with a K mm -hmm. I like okay. this one no grain no gain yeah uh -huh. okay <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I or, think gra- I think too much grain, no gain. <laughs> is more likely. Well, no gain weight. I think that's what you know. Yeah, yeah. No grain, right, right. Yeah, no sure. grain, no gaining yeah. weight. Yeah. yeah. Praise the yeah. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, never say diet. That's a good one. Oh, I like that too. Always take time to stop and eat the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's another good one. Keto. Obesity and type 2 diabetes lost a lot of their appeal. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, they certainly did. (laughs) And finally, Papa always brings home the bacon because Mama knows that fat is where it's at. Fat is where it's at. Yeah. Love it. (laughs) Love it. it. Uh, Well done, Ketogenic Forum. (laughs) A little levity here. Mm -hmm. So as Richard said, this show is all about the people in our immediate social network. Anyway, on the forums and Facebook. This show is all about you, our listeners. Yep. Yeah. And particularly those who have lost 100 pounds or more uh, with a ketogenic lifestyle. Yeah, we call you our keto centurions. So Richard posted on his wall, Mm. uh, hey, everybody, we're doing a show about you. And if you've lost 100 pounds or more, go to this uh, thread on the forum and enter your data. Mm. And what we wanted to know was your starting weight, your ending weight, right? Uh, your starting A1C and your ending A1C. And we'll just add it all up and, and tell everybody what the results are. Well, on your Facebook post itself, 16 people mm. replied Wow, how much weight they've lost. And it wasn't, they didn't post their A1C. But yeah. of those 16 people, there was a total of 1,462 pounds lost. Wow. The average weight loss was 91 pounds. The total number of years that they kept it off, in other words, you know, I've, I've been keto for X number of years or whatever. The total number of years that people have been keto is 54. Right. So what and, was the average? And the average is three and a half. Right. Well, that, see, that's impossible. Oh, yeah, if, if absolutely. You, if you ask anybody who is an expert in weight loss uh, what the what the likelihood of somebody losing a hundred pounds and then keeping it off for three and a half years, even one um, year, they'll they'll yeah they'll, they'll tell you that one in a hundred are yep. able to do that. 1%. Most people are able to to lose maybe ten percent of their body weight. These people have lost like thirty five percent of their body weight. I've lost uh, over thirty five percent of my body weight yeah, and yeah. kept it off, and it's been effortless right. to keep it off for yep. you know for almost four years now. I, I've been keto in April April the twentieth. I will have been keto for four years. Wow! And it, it's just it's it's just remarkable how. Easy it is once you get the derangement out of your way. Right. You know, and some of these people, these photographs on the Facebook group uh, are oh, remarkable. Yeah. I mean, these, these people, I'm thinking like Darren Graham. I mean, he's lost 170 pounds in 18 months and he went from five medications to none. Uh, his, his pant size went from 52 down to 34. I mean, yeah. I've got a bit, mine, mine went from 50 to, to 34. So, yeah. um, and he went from an 8XL shirt to an XL shirt. Mm. Uh, I went from a three to an XL. Mm. His blood pressure went from 160 over 120 yowzers to <laughs> 117 over 74. And he, he went from not being able to walk 200 meters to doing a half marathon. That's insane. Which is, Incredible. And, you know, I mean, he, he used to not be able to go two hours without food, and now he does five-day fasts, you know. That's great. It, it totally turned his life around. So, and, and the photographs are there to show. Right. Well, the other thing was that in our ketogenic forums, which you can get to at forum.2keto.com, free resource, we mm-hmm. uh, yeah. ask people when they register to enter in their A1C. And right. they're starting A1C, and we also asked people who were filling out this survey to give us their starting and ending A1C. And how? And, and so let's start with the aggregates. Let's start with the averages, the basic numbers of how much weight was lost and how many people reported it. Right. Well, uh, the number of people who've actually reported us uh, their weight loss is 189 people on the forum. That's out of 14,000 people. It's not mandatory to, to, to put this information in. It's right. just voluntary. Yeah. Uh, but of the 189 people who reported how much weight they've lost in how much time, uh, the average loss was 44 pounds, and there was the total weight lost in that group of 189 people 
is 8,291 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> like four tons. Four tons of fat. <laughs> Right, God, and, and it's all and it's all fat. Uh, people who are ketogenic don't lose a lot of lean mass. I mean, this is all uh, body fat. This is drawing down your stored energy. Right. So, yeah. And uh, so that you said the average loss was forty four pounds, and um, you know that's just of people who happen to be on the forum. Uh, you think about it; most of the people on the forum are, you know, they come to the forum to start, mm. you know, when, to yeah. start their journey. And get support. Yeah. So there's a lot more people who uh, have been doing it for less time. Yeah. And, well, there's a lot of people who've been doing it just since the beginning of January. Right. So So what about HbA1c? So uh, of the 14,000 people on the forum, 726 reported their beginning and ending HbA1cs. Um, there's some more people who've actually just given us their just their beginning or just their ending HbA1Cs. Maybe right. they 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 got one to begin with when they were diabetic, but they haven't had one since mm. being keto. Or maybe in a lot of cases, a lot of people didn't know their HbA1Cs because they didn't even know this was an this test was an option. It always surprises me. Yeah, you would think it'd be the first thing you'd want to know. Exactly. And, and, you know, insulin and blood sugar, you, people just don't mm. even know. They don't even think that that has anything to do with weight loss. That's right. So yeah. so of the people on our ketogenic forums, of the 14,000 people who have an account on the ketogenic forums, uh, 726 reported us their beginning and ending HbA1Cs, which is roughly 5% of the population on the forum. Mm. And if that is at all representative – the number of people who are actually cured of diabetes, <laughs> according to their HbA1Cs, is just remarkable. So of the people on the forum who have an HbA1C starting off that indicates that they are diabetic, mm. who now have a current HbA1C that indicates that they're non-diabetic, 184 people fit that category. So 25% of the people who've reported wow. are diabetics who've been cured. That's crazy. Uh, that. That's just significant because – now, here's the other thing. We, we, we're told that nobody is able to lose 100 pounds and keep it off for, for more than six months. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we're told is diabetes is always progressive, right? Right. You can't reverse it. We're never told that you can reverse diabetes. And yet, here, there are 25% of the people who reported their HbA1c uh, on the forum are type 2 diabetics, full-on type 2 diabetics when they walk in the door. They go keto and – 25% uh, of them are, are totally cured. Hmm. And there are probably 70 people who started out being pre-diabetic, which is pre-diabetes is it's sort of like the waypoint on the way to diabetes. Right. And so that's roughly 10% of our population were pre-diabetic and they've been totally cured. They're non-diabetic. About 10%. Yeah, about 10%. And then people who were diabetic but are now – pre-diabetic, and I assume if they keep going at it, they'll be able to get down to non-diabetic, mm -hmm. uh, that's another 6%. So we're talking about 25% wow. plus 10% plus 6%. That's uh, what, 41%? Uh, 41%. Of people who've told us about their HbA1c who've become either – Cured or moved down to pre-diabetes from diabetes, which yeah. that's remarkable. That is remarkable. Considering it's impossible. Considering this is impossible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh, as far as the, the data that we, we took, the total number of people in you know who reported uh, their weight and or their A1C is what, about 2,000? Yeah, about 2,000 people. So yeah. uh, we had to remove people who only gave us either the beginning or only gave us the ending HbA1c. We had to remove them. And uh, in the end, we just wanted to see how many people have, have been able to successfully bend the needle right. to do something that was impossible. Yep. So I think what we ought to do now is dive into some of the stories that uh, people didn't just report their numbers. They shared photos and they, they told their stories. Yeah. So I'll start with uh, Heather, and yeah. Heather says, I'm down 112 pounds in total from 260, currently at 148 wow. and still going. First well 40 pounds was pre-keto, but keto was certainly faster and easier, and I'll never go back. <laughs> I also lowered A1C from over 11 to currently 6.0 and working on lower still. Looking yeah. forward to seeing all the 100-pound-plus success stories. And Heather looks well done, amazing Heather, yeah. in her picture. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Different person almost. Different person. 
So I've got one here from Deborah who says, I wonder if I count. Between 16 and 13 years ago, I lost a total of 105 pounds when I went low carb. Uh, yes, Deborah, yep. I think that counts. Yep. Uh, I, I maintained that loss for another four years until I got pregnant. Despite my total dedication to low carb, which had turned my life around, and which I was in totally in love with, I was so sick. I had mild hyperemesis, which is you know, morning sickness, um, mm. that uh, no matter uh, what I tried, I could only stomach carbs, and mm. then I threw them up. But despite throwing up four times a day, I gained about 25 pounds before I could go back to low carb, at which point I didn't gain any more weight. But then I gained a little more, bit more during breastfeeding, and I had gained some pre-pregnancy during the honeymoon months when I wasn't as careful as I needed to be. Yep, yep. So when my son was about a month old, I found myself about 40 pounds higher than I'd been at my lowest weight, which was incredibly distressing. But I figured low carb had finally taught me how to eat, so all I had to do was continue, and I'd lose it again. Even if it would take time as I've always been a slow loser, well, actually, it didn't happen. Oh. For the next eight years, it didn't happen. Oh. I kept eating low carb, and every so often I'd put in an extra effort. I'd do strict keto for a month, or I'd count calories as well as carbs, or I'd quit sweeteners, but there'd be minimal change. Uh, and I would feel like I was on a diet, feel deprived, not feel like I'd felt when I'd initially low-carbed, I even kept slowly gaining weight over those years. And by the time December 2016 rolled along, I'd managed to go up to 217 pounds from my low of 145. Wow. Uh, my highest weight was uh, 250 in my mid-20s. Um, I thought it was my age. I'm in my mid-40s now, so I, and I was miserable. Uh, but there I was, a dedicated low-carber. I owned all the books. I knew all the names before many of you did. She tells us on the forum. <laughs> she says... She said, well, she's been doing it for 16 years. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. She, she knows good calories, bad calories back, back to front. She got that when it came out. Uh, and, uh, she says, but how could I be an ambassador for low carb when I was gaining weight despite eating low carb 95.5% of the time? Mm. Um, I was never diabetic, by the way, just very fat. Well, I, Deborah, I would actually say that uh, that just because the doctor doesn't know that you're diabetic doesn't mean you're not on the continuum. That's right. Um, clearly, the fact that you a low carb diet was able to help you lose weight from your top that indicates that you're certainly on that uh, that continuum there. But anyway, Deborah goes on. She says my blood work was great because I ate low carb. One doctor almost laughed at me when I asked about having an insulin test because. Why would they give me one when everything look, else looks fabulous? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. in December of 2016, I read The Obesity Code. I almost didn't buy it. Just another book telling me things I already thought I knew. And thank goodness I did, though. Most of it was familiar, true enough, but there were two things that stood out. Sweeten and raises insulin. Yeah. And even low carb won't necessarily lower your insulin to the point where you can actually lower your set point. That's right. So I quit sweetener and started alternate day fasting in combination with my ever-present low-carb keto diet. Um, I call it low-carb, but really you could just call it lazy keto. Yeah. Um, uh, she says, I'm now a year later down 50 pounds. Yay! Yeah, well done, Deborah. I have no doubt now that uh, while it may take me a little bit longer, I'm still a slow loser. I'll get back to that 100-plus pounds I've lost. I'm now 83 pounds pounds down from the highest weight I saw, which was 20 years ago. Uh, and I've uh, another 10 pounds to go to my pre-pregnancy weight and then 22 to my lowest weight as an adult. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was obese by the age of 14. Wow. Uh, anyway, she says, uh, keto wasn't enough for me, not once I had kids. Uh, I'm sure my cortisol was raised for years post-birth. Yep. My son was a terrible sleeper. and Yeah. Uh, most parents know know all of this. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but she says, um, sorry for the long post, but um, I'd love to talk about my experiences because I've been doing this for so long and because my long-term success with low-carb keto was negatively affected by the upheavals of the pregnancy uh, and some other stresses like job losses, despite my continuing to eat right, and it took eight years of struggling and only then with Dr. Fung's book, a mm. combination of keto and fasting and quitting sweetness for things to work again, but now I'm on fire. I love fasting and I love my love of keto and low carb, which has been renewed. Uh, my appetite is back where it should be. I'm in charge, not my body. And I finally feel like my appearance has begun to reflect my commitment to the healthiest mm. way of eating that there is. And this is almost a obesity code podcast. Yeah, right it really there. is. Yeah, yeah. 
Amazing. Wonderful story, Deborah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, and her pictures also look great, and uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, outstanding. So this one is from Liz Myers, who helped us out at Keto Fest, Brenda's friend. She sure did. Yeah. And she says, not all my weight loss was from keto, but the easiest weight loss has been. I've always been morbidly obese right from infancy. Mm. In the spring of 2003, at age 29, I was diagnosed as being Mm pre-diabetic. That fall, I had RNY weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. I weighed 343 pounds the morning of the surgery. I lost 140 pounds by spring of 2005 and hovered around there a few years before my weight started slowly creeping up. In March of 2015, I weighed 235. My husband and I were planning a cross-country motorcycle trip for 2016. And I knew I needed to increase my fitness level for it. Over the next nightmarish 15 months, I worked with a trainer and saw two nutritionists and lost 35 pounds. I followed all the crappy standard diet advice, was obsessing over food because I was constantly hungry and had zero energy. It's bad when your trainer sends you home because you're dragging so badly. Got to the point that I felt I was unsafe to ride my motorcycle. So I stopped monitoring my food intake a few weeks before we left. I vowed I would dig into the science behind hunger and energy when I got back. Right. She goes on to say, I had an accident during the trip, and during my recovery, I saw a post about keto from Brenda Zorn. We were motorcycle (laughs) Facebook friends. (laughs) I was bored and cranky, and diet posts annoyed me, so I was determined to research (laughs) and disprove the wacky diet she kept posting about. Only I couldn't. Hmm? I read the obesity code and had a light bulb moment when Dr. Fung talked about high insulin levels making you unable to access energy. That is why I was always so darn tired. That's right. That was January 2017, and I weighed 230 pounds. I was full keto by mid-March and have lost 47 pounds on keto so far. Wow. It blows my mind that every few days I wake up and I am a new lowest weight. 183 (laughs) this morning. I've started running. No, I'm not being chased. (laughs) Something that I never thought I'd be able to do ever. I'm never hungry. I had never have low energy. Ketogenic diet is responsible for my meeting incredible people. Can life get any better? Wow. Wow. And she's got photographs up there on the forum too uh, with her blue dog. And uh, boy, she... She's done wonderfully. She really has come a long way. Congratulations, Liz. And we'll see you at Keto Fest. Yeah. (laughs) Again. So I've got one here from uh, Aussie Will. And uh, Will is a uh, a triathlete, and he's got photographs of when he was big, and he was a big lad. Yeah, Uh, he was. And he says that uh, he started keto on the 1st of January last year, 2017, so he's been doing it for 12 months. Mm -hmm. Uh, His starting weight was uh, 172 kilograms, uh, and uh, he was 186 centimetres tall. Uh, and his current weight is 115 kilograms, and he's two centimeters taller. It's <laughs> <That's laughs> so, crazy. So he lost weight. And go well. That's it. I mean, you, you you're not you're compressing your spine less. So um, I suppose that, you're right. That is yeah. how that works. Yeah. Mm. So he says, since going keto, I've completed two half marathons, oh. one full marathon, three Whoa. triathlons, uh, two of which are sprint triathlons, and one's an Olympic triathlon. Uh, he's ridden around the Bay uh, Charity Ride, which is a 280-kilometer bike ride around Port Phillip Bay in Melbourne hmm. uh, in Australia. Uh, he's also started his own keto group at work, and he's helped two colleagues to reverse their type 2 diabetes. His next goal is to get to 100 kilograms. That's That, that would be – he wants to get to 220 pounds yeah. uh, in total weight, and t- he wants to join the Royal Australian Navy hmm. now that he fits their fitness requirements. So uh, wow. he says, Two Keto Dudes podcast got me through this, and it continues to. Thanks, Lates. Oh, well done, sir. You're welcome, Will. That is an outstanding result, and uh, we're, we're all very impressed. Well done. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we all know Brenda's uh, story, but she posted this anyway. Yeah. She's lost 100 total. Yeah. Ketogenic since February 2014. Her A1C went from 12 to 5. Brenda will do anything to one-up me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I went from 11.2 <laughs> to 5. <laughs> yeah. Let me go on to read one from Jennifer. And uh, sure. she posted a picture that is just stunning. Mm. 
And she says, hi, just joined the forums here, but I've lurked for a while. Love the podcast. I'm on Facebook and have been helping Karen Ogilvy run the Impulsive Keto Groups. Recently started podcasting with her on the Impulsive Keto Cast, which is a ton mm. of fun and hugely educational for me. Yeah. All right, story time. My whole life I was obese. My mom's obese. My dad's obese. My brother's obese. My aunts and uncles are not all obese, but some of them, yeah. I figure my ancestors survived regular starvation in the shuttle on two beets and a potato. So if we lived <laughs> in a situation of food scarcity, I would totally be in great shape. Whereas my sister-in-law, who devours cases of Twinkies daily and remains right. 105 pounds, would die right off. Yeah. But yeah, alas, sure. we are surrounded by abundance and my genes are not ideal. Mm. She goes on to say, I was a happy 245 pound fat chick until early 2014 when I got my diabetes diagnosis. 12.1 A1C. Yeah. My doctor gave me metformin and told me to eat better and check back in a few months. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Yeah. What does classic. that mean, right? Eat better. I, I know exactly what it means. <laughs> they send you to a certified diabetes educator yeah. and they put you on a, on a high carb, a high grain, low fat diet and they want you to come back and get another HbA1c and the two will confirm the diagnosis right and and, and then they put you on a, 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 a range of of increasing medication to cause you to make more insulin. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, uh, I'm getting off the subject. Let's get back to Jennifer. All right. So she says, well, I lost some weight in between that and the metform, and I got my A1C down in the sixes. Great job, said mm. my doctor. But my A1C numbers started creeping back up, and the doc prescribed more metformin than glipizide. Glipizide, yeah. Then my kidneys started having issues, and the cholesterol numbers were bad. That's okay, said my doctor. Diabetes is a progressive disease, and that's how it goes sometimes, as he calmly prescribed more drugs. Uh, such uh, a common story. <laughs> yeah. It was midsummer 2015 when that happened. A few days later, I was at Six Flags with my family, most of whom didn't even try to fit into the rides that required tight safety harnesses. Mm. I love roller coasters, though. Well, the safety harness closed over my gut, but it took two of the ride operators to slam it into place. I could feel their contempt. Yeah. Later that day, I heard one of my diabetic, morbidly obese aunts had to call 911 because she'd fallen and couldn't get up on her own. Wake up call finally hit me. I could not keep going down this road. Ugh. I did research and found keto on Reddit. Then nearly killed myself with severe hypoglycemia. Ugh. <laughs> Ouch. Lipizide. Yeah. Such a horrible yeah. drug. My doctor said, yeah, that was a common side effect. Just keep orange juice on hand. Oh, thanks, doc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I fired that guy and got a keto savvy yay! doctor. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Yeah, if you can't change your doctor, change, change your doctor. Change your doctor. Yeah. <laughs> In short order, I was able to discontinue the glipizide metformin, and although it took a year for my kidney numbers to normalize, they healed too. Well done. Yeah, I mean, that's something that Jason Fung said in the kidney disease episode of The Obesity Code, mm -hmm. um, yeah. that, uh, you know, it, it, at a certain point of, you know, when your kidneys start to get sick, you can dial it back, but there is a point of no return. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So she goes on with, with 100 pounds of weight lost, I had a bunch of loose skin that kept getting infected. <laughs> In June 2017, I got it cut off. My weight's been stable at 145-ish for the past 1.5 years now. I follow the impulsive keto method of intermittent fasting and meals of meat plus two veg, more or less. Mm -hmm. My HOMA IR, that's a measure of insulin resistance, right? Yes, which we mentioned before, yeah. Yeah. It's been tested at 0.5, which is as good as it gets. That's outstanding. Yeah. My cholesterol's great. My blood pressure's great. Everything's great, uh, except for some thyroid and anemia issues. Hmm. Currently trying an experiment with alternate day fasting. No food Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So basically three 44-hour fasts during the week. 44 hours? That's like almost two days. So it's an alternate day fast, right. and then she's intermittent fast the next day. Yeah, yeah, so you're, right, you're right. That's right. Skips breakfast and has dinner. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't losing my mm. mind. So <laughs> basically, three 44 hour fasts during the week to see if I can right. shake my body off this 145 set point and lose another 10 pounds or so, just out of vanity, really. 
We'll see. <laughs> uh, wow, that's so great. Uh, thank you very much for that, Jennifer. Well done, Jennifer. That's a, that's an outstanding story, and it's a common story. I, I mean, I recognize in Jennifer's story a lot of things that happened to me, the yeah. bad diet that they put you on, the, the drug r- regime they put you on, the, yeah. the, the attitude about uh, – uh, like I, I can certainly remember being at a ride and having somebody clamp down the the security bar on yep. me, and I I realized, hey, you know, th- this ride isn't for people like me anymore. Here's a story that I haven't told on the show. I brought my daughters to uh, Universal Studios over Christmas a couple of years ago before I started keto, mm. and uh, you know, I was like 360 pounds, right? Sure. So we wanted to go on the Harry Potter ride. We stood in line for four hours, and they and the thing wouldn't wow. fit. So. And my little youngest daughter cried, you know, she was so sad. So I'm making a point of it to go back there and do that with them so that I can experience it too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Because now, of course, I would fit in no problem. Yeah, sure. So the next uh, one that we have from our forum is uh, Dustin. And (laughs) Dustin's... uh, He's got photographs from his before and after. He was also 50-inch pants, and he's down to 44, and he's gone from a 5XL Batman shirt to a 2XL shirt. And he's got a great hipster beard, doesn't he? The <laughs> he thing's does. like a foot and a half long. Yeah, it's like he's wearing a possum. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, you're going to have to go to the ketogenic forum to check that out. Yeah, it's, it's truly stunning. <laughs> it is. He says, I, I started keto – September of 2016, I was uh, about 410, 420 pounds, uh, and now uh, he weighed himself on the 7th of January, this in 2018, now I'm 300 pounds, so I'm down well over 100 pounds. Yeah. Uh, and, the fo- and the following photo gives a glimpse of his uh, <laughs> his progress and his awesome hipster beard. Yeah. And. Yeah, that's that's an outstanding result. Well done, Dustin. Yep. All right, the next one is truly remarkable. This is Kenneth. Mm. And Ken yeah. says, I lost 250 pounds in 30 months. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. And he, you can see it from his photos. Oh. He looks like a different person. He's clearly the same person. He's half he, the man know, he used to be. Yeah, so. <laughs> Absolutely. He says, I started eating low carb in February 2014, tipping the scales at 440 pounds. The photo on the right was taken in July 2014 after I'd lost 70 pounds or so. Mm. So I don't have any true before photos at 440 as I did a pretty good job avoiding the camera. Yeah, didn't we Uh, all? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Low carb, less than 30 net carbs was how I started out. When my weight loss slowed, I started eating at a deeper ketogenic level, less than 20 net carbs to keep the scale moving. In August 2016, I reached my goal of 190 pounds. Since then, I've had a little bounce with the scales. I try to figure out what I must do to maintain. Mm -hmm. I experimented with adding back a few more daily carbs and weight creep set in. I regained about 25 pounds over the next year. Lesson learned. Lower carb is not good enough for me. I'm back to eating keto and the scales moving in the right direction again. In 2014, I had chronic lower back pain, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and a number of other conditions related to high blood sugar. I have completely regained my health. Wow. Wow, indeed. The secret for me was making low-carb, high-fat how I eat for life. I stopped, quote-unquote, going on a diet. Yeah. I changed how I eat forever. Yeah, change how you feel. Absolutely. I have not had cake, candy, donuts, bread, pizza, pasta, you name it, in nearly four years. I deprived myself of the junk that I used to love to eat until I no longer felt deprived. Mm -hmm. These days I eat healthy whole foods. I hardly miss carby junk anymore. By sticking to on-plan foods, my brain rewired itself around what I do eat, and I'm completely happy with how I eat. My body's happy too. After 30 years of morbid obesity, I now have my life back. To keep it, I know that I have to stay away from foods I can't moderate. I am a keto man. That is how <laughs> he I <certainly> eat. Is. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's got forearms like Pop- Popeye now. I mean, uh, absolutely. He is, and 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 his his calves. I mean, that's the thing is that on the ketogenic diet, we maintain our lean mass. And if we're going around in a body that's four hundred and forty pounds, yeah. uh, when we lose the, all of the the body fat, we're left with prodigious muscles remaining. Yep. So I see a lot of keto people who 
who were, you know, um, 300 plus who yeah. lose the, the, the excess body fat and, uh, they look ripped, you know, tight muscle so you know yeah. it's remarkable it is remarkable and he certainly has bulked up and he just looks like yeah. as strong as an ox and yeah well done speaking of strong as an ox uh, let me guess brenda zorn yeah i know you meant you gave you gave uh, a summary of brenda's results but she's given us a full um a detail of her journey and she says uh this is brenda and yeah. she says uh i've been on the ketogenic diet since february of 2014 I arrived here purely by chance. I was experimenting with making dietary changes through the book Wheat Belly in 2013, and I stumbled across low-carb healthy fat support groups on Facebook, and then I quickly found keto. I had never heard of the ketogenic diet. I thought the people on the keto diet were crazy, risky, mm. and rebellious. And we are. I wanted some of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Brenda. You have to get to know her. <laughs> so uh, she says, Becoming fat adapted quickly cured type 2 diabetes mellitus. Though that's not even the reason that I started keto. It also cured my cyclical depression. Mm. Also not the reason I started keto. Yeah. My A1C was 12 then and my triglycerides were 1,200. Whoa. I know, right? She'll do anything to beat me. (laughs) My triglycerides were 11.11 and my HbA1c was (laughs) 11.2. And she started two months before I started. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, she goes on. She says, uh, my, now my A1C is in normal range, five, and my trigs uh, just a few days ago were 90, also normal. Matter of fact, my doctor recently took my diagnosis of type 2 diabetes off my chart. Awesome. I'd never heard of a doctor actually doing that. No. Nope. Normally they say, oh, you know, you're, 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 you're still diabetic if you go back to eating, uh, you know, the standard right. American diet. Right. But Brenda goes on to say, these days I ride a huge dual sport motorcycle and I, and I travel on it. I rode to Keto Fest 2017 from Minnesota. Fasted. So she rode from Minnesota, fasted <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to Connecticut. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, she also swims laps at the gym and she lifts heavy. I spend an enormous amount of my time helping others learn the ketogenic diet. Yeah. My focus is on those with diabetes and severe obesity, as I once had both. I've lost a total of 100 pounds on my journey. Uh, I've toyed with losing 20 pounds more, but have discovered and realized that this extra body fat gives me a distinct advantage when fasting. Mm. I can go several days without any food or energy supplementation. It's like having a superpower. It is imp- having a superpower. <laughs> it is. It is having a superpower. <laughs> more importantly, I'm challenging myself to build more lean body mass. Mine, as confirmed by a recent DEXA scan, is 127 pounds, and I'm only five foot seven. That's dense. So, uh, she's a dense Solid. woman. <laughs> Solid woman. <laughs> yep. Uh, so she says, three months later, I repeated the same DEXA scan after lowering my protein macro by half. I had been at one gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. I lowered my macro to 0. 0.5. That's half a gram of protein per pound of lean body mass. I continued my regular lifting routine. In that three months, I increased my lean body mass by four pounds. That flies in the face of what some people believe you should eat protein-wise. It it does, but let's not go there. (laughs) She says, I have stayed with my lower macro amount. Anything more would be wasted, as obviously I do not need it for muscle building and repair. Also, excess protein only increases insulin, which I avoid at all costs. Yeah. She says... I've done a lot of things on this ketogenic journey. I ran the original Keto Ninjas group online. Uh, I admin to many more groups, including the now archived Two Keto Dudes Facebook group. Mm -hmm. I was the third member of that group that grew to 14,000 in nine months. Uh, It's Carl, Richard, and me, and there's a cool history there. Uh, I've been a guest on seven Count it seven <laughs> two keto dudes podcasts. Uh, my own story is podcast number twenty one. I think Brenda's trying to compete with Dave Feldman. You know, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, so uh, she says in twenty seventeen, my personal story was published by Doctor Fung on his IDM site and Andreas Einfeld on the Diet Doctor site. Uh, I travelled to Missouri for a keto meetup with Tom Seast and his local people twice. And I have had several individual meetups with Ketopians in my area. I attended Low Carb Breckenridge 2017 in Colorado with the two Keto Dudes crew and attended Keto Fest in 2017 mm. in July. Uh, I will be attending Low Carb Breckenridge 2018 and, of course, Keto Fest 2018. My newest development, I now work 
with Dr. Jason Fung and Megan Ramos for their intensive dietary management program. Yeah. Brenda says, I love my keto life. The most important aspect for me, though, is helping you. And she's, Brenda's actually shared for the first time ever yeah. uh, her fat photo from a family reunion photo in 2006. It's amazing. And it is amazing how uh, much she has uh, taken control of her own life and the result is remarkable. And Brenda finishes off with a quick word of warning, don't fear the fat. <laughs> yes, embrace the fat. Embrace the fat. And that, of course, is just a fraction of the number of people that shared their numbers. And we just thought those stories, you wanted to hear those. And uh, that's why we did this show. But I think I'm getting hungry, Richard. Are you? I am. I'm ready for some... Recipes! (laughs) Recipes! Recipes. 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 Okay. So what do you got, Carl? Well, we are continuing our uh, appetizer year, our small bites yes. year, and this mm-hmm. is tapas month, so we're in Spain still, yeah. and I'm sharing a really, really simple tapas that I actually had at a party in Barcelona. This was at a, a Tech Ed, which is a Microsoft conference they used to do in Barcelona a couple of times, yeah. and yeah. It, was a, it was a speaker party, mm-hmm. and I just remember eating this bite and thinking that is the most perfect bite I've ever tasted. I just couldn't believe how delicious it was. And it's very simple. There was yellowfin tuna, sushi grade tuna, Mm -hmm. uh, and it was swimming in olive oil, salt, and pepper. Not swimming alive. Uh, No, 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 no. It was just a little chunk of uh, of tuna that had been dipped in olive oil and salt and pepper dusted. And then it had a piece of melon on top, like a, a little bite of sweet honeydew melon. Yeah. And of course, being keto, we probably shouldn't be eating honeydew melon. But <laughs> if you take no. a little piece of a blackberry, maybe a quarter of a blackberry, right? just enough to get a little flavor, mm. and put it on top and then stick a toothpick through it, put that on a tray and serve that at your next tapas party. Let me tell you something, man. That's just mm. so good. Just the combination yeah. of the salty tuna with the yeah. oil being really dense yeah. and meaty, mm-hmm. and then just yeah. a little pop of sweet on top of it. Yes. Nice. Just to me. I don't even know what to call it. Sweet and salty tuna bites, maybe? Yeah, it's like a sour. I mean, because berries are a little bit sour. They don't a have a lot sour. of sugar in them. Right. Yeah. People think of uh, berries being sweet, but that's only because, you know, if you have uh, a, a, a strawberry uh, cheesecake, it's mm, full yeah. of sugar, you know. Well, and I find yeah. that just raw blackberries are really sweet to me right now. Mm, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's because we don't eat sugar. We're actually coming to blackberry season now, so we're actually going to be foraging for them <laughs> nice. in the wild. So, yeah, it's very nice. Well, anyway, that's my quick and easy tapas recipe today. What's yours? Oh, I've got an even quicker one. <laughs> this is this is uh, uh, almendras al pimenton, which is uh, smoked paprika almonds. Oh. It takes about five minutes to prepare them and about 10 minutes to make them. Total time of 15 minutes and you've got uh, your tapas meal. So there's only really four ingredients here. <laughs> there's, um, so you start off with two and a half cups of raw almonds. These are almonds with the, the, the little skid on. Mm. And you want about two, two and a half cups of raw almonds. You want about a tablespoon of coarse sea salt. Very coarse, yeah. Uh, yes. And you also want uh, half a teaspoon of smoked uh, sweet Spanish paprika or a hot paprika. Nice. Uh, and then uh, about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. So to cook this, uh, you're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit first. And you want to spread the almonds onto an ungreased baking sheet and you want to toast them for 8 to 10 minutes, stirring occasionally until the almonds are golden brown and giving off a toasted aroma. Mm. Uh, and watch them carefully for uh, after about 7 minutes because they will burn quickly. Um, so when the nuts are toasting, you want to combine the sea salt and the smoked paprika in a small spice grinder or a mortar and pestle, uh, and you want to grind them to combine them into a fine powder. You can also use like one of the grinding blades in a magic bullet 
And you want to grind it to a fine powder, but um, you can also leave it a little bit coarse if you like having bigger flakes of salt, or you can um, grind half of the salt and then reserve the other half of the salt and add the bigger flakes if you want them for, uh, for, for the look. Anyway, once the almonds are out of the oven, you drizzle them with olive oil and you toss to combine and then add a little extra oil if not all of the nuts are coated. You want a, like an olive oil coating over all of the roasted nuts. Yeah. And then you sprinkle them with the, the spice the salt and the paprika mix and you stir them up again and you transfer them to a serving bowl and serve them at room temperature and uh, and that uh, is a delicious classic yes. tapas and that reminds me uh, I just want to say this before we stop today I recently gave up eating blue diamond um, smokehouse almonds which had been a staple okay. of mine yeah after mm. I read the ingredients so Oh, yeah? What are they? The vegetable oil that they're cooked in contains canola, safflower, and Ugh. or sunflower oil. Cheap polyunsaturated omega-6 yeah, fatty right. acids. And then I was surprised to learn some more ingredients. Corn maltodextrin. Sugar. Ooh. Yeah. Ugh. And then natural hickory smoke flavor, yeast, hydrolyzed corn and soy protein. Mm. Why? Why do you need, why do you need that in, in nuts? I mean, yeah, I don't get it. So they, they taste so good at, at, as they are. Right. You know, roast them a little bit, put a bit of olive oil on, throw on some salt. It's, it's not rocket surgery. And the smoked paprika, I get, uh, you know, in your recipe there, gives it that smoky flavor that yeah. I love. You know, roasted smoked almonds, I love them, but I'm, I don't you, think I'm going to eat know, these anymore. No. One thing you could do here is you could bring the roasted almonds out after you've put the olive oil on. Yeah. You could uh, throw them in a, in a in an oven bag. And uh, and use a cold smoker mm. on them, and because what will happen is the smoke particles will stick, stick to, the, to olive the olive oil, oil on the outside. Yeah, Absolutely. and that would be delicious. So if you really want to smoke them, or you could, I mean, instead of using an oven, you could, I guess, you could use a hot smoker. I suppose my you mind's could. going at a hundred mile an hour now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's a show. It's been a great one hundred episodes with you, my friend, and I'm looking forward to another hundred. And maybe we could do this again at the two hundredth show, and maybe every hundred shows or so. Yeah. Well, I think we're coming up to our two-year anniversary, at least a two-year anniversary of, of you being in keto. So, yeah, that's uh, right. So that's going to be another another episode to another do something special on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, another milestone. There you go. Yeah. Of course, if you have anything that you want to tell us, something we said wrong, something you don't agree with, some more research you found to support or refute anything that we've said, send it by email to dudes at twoketodudes.com or post it on our website. And you can follow us on Twitter at 2KetoDudes, on Instagram at 2KetoDudes, and make sure to use the hashtag 2KetoDudes. And of course, if you want to join the free ketogenic forum, it's forum.2keto.com. And if useless swag is your fancy, you know, t-shirts, coffee mugs, and other junk with witty keto sayings on them, head over to gear.2keto.com. If you want a shot at getting some of that swag for free, join the Two Keto Dudes fan club. You'll be eligible to win something in every show. Go to fanclub.twoketo.com. And if you feel like supporting our podcasts and our forums, think about making a pledge on our Patreon page at patreon.twoketo.com. Or just hit the donate button on our website at www.twoketodudes.com. Or just go to donate.twoketo.com. And you can also see all of our podcasts and other videos on YouTube at youtube.2keto.com. And if you haven't already, go leave us a review on iTunes. That's how new people get to know about what we do. Two Keto Dudes is brought to you by Two Keto LLC, who strives to support the low-carb community with podcasts and other publications. Well, keep calm and keto on, Richard. Yeah, keep calm and keto on, Carl. All right. And we'll see you next time on Two, two Keto, keto Dudes. Dudes.